to be impacted by yes. the gospel yes. of Jesus yes. Christ. Amen. So don't let the enemy confuse you and think, well, if I'm not doing it in the church, then I'm not doing anything. More ministry is done outside yes. those doors than yes. in here. Yes. We're supposed to come here to get refilled. Amen? Amen. We're supposed to come here to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We're supposed to come to get um, filled up by God. This is not where the church people shouldn't be getting delivered every single Sunday. <laughs> Preach. Amen. Amen. That's if you're getting delivered from the same thing every Sunday, you might want to check your walk with God. Because sometimes you're supposed to come in here and get empowered and then go out there and mess with the devil's camp. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I don't have too many amens out there. But that's all right. So when I came, the woman said that her title was, I'm sorry, she's a prophetess, so let me say that. I'm bad with titles, y'all, because I, I don't care about them. I really don't. I just want to be a servant of the Lord. So the prophetess was here. And she said her message was, who are you? That's right. And I said, well, isn't that something? Because before I came, God had given me the message, who are you? <laughs> so I said, well, you know how we get when we in the church, somebody preached what yeah, we were supposed God. to preach. We said, well, Lord, I got to change it now. No, you don't. So I said, well, hold on. I'm not wait, changing. No, wait, I can't wait, change what God wait, said. Man, wait. If God is asking you through the prophetess, who are you? He's still asking you, who That's are right. you? Amen. Look at your name and say, who are you? Who are, who are, you? Are, you? Who are you? We're going to find our subject today in Acts 19. Who are you? Who are you? It's a question that many of us are trying to find. Many of us are answering or trying to answer this question. We're asking everybody else. We're asking our Come friends. On. We're asking our loved ones. We're asking our um, associates. We're asking the people on our job. We're asking the people in the church. We're asking, who are, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Cause some, some people I look and I ask myself, who in the world are you? And many of us are looking for answers for who we are. But we need to realize that we don't have an identity outside of Christ. Yes. If your identity is not in Christ, then you will never know never really know. who you are. Young people, we can't look at everybody and all the stars and all the basketball players and all these people and try to define who we are because God says, I have created you Amen. before you were in your mother's womb and I made you special and only God yes. can unlock who we really are. Amen? Amen. Sometimes it will take situations and tests and trials to make us find out who we are. Sometimes it will take people turning their backs on us for us to know who we are. But in this scripture, we're going to talk about um, the Holy Spirit and just defining who we are as a people of God. Amen. 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 So Acts 19, 19. verse 1. Amen. And my translation may be a little bit different from yours, but it's okay. And it happened that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul passed through inland, through the inland country and came to Ephesus. There he found some disciples. Somebody say, found some disciples. Found some disciples. Church people. <laughs> and he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Look at this. The disciples, the church people said, no. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Come on. Then he said, well, what in the world were you baptized in then? I know. I'll make, I'll make, this is the Rick version right now. Is that all right? So what in the world were you baptized in? And they said, into Pastor Franklin's baptism. My Lord. Into Missy's baptism. My Lord. Into the piano player's baptism. Yes. And John said, well, they said, into John's baptism. And Paul said, well, Pastor Franklin, she baptized with the baptism of repentance. She told you and she told the people to believe in the one who was coming after her. And that's Jesus. Somebody say, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. Y'all don't mind if I do this this way, do you? No. On hearing this, they, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them immediately. immediately. And they began speaking in tongues Woo. and prophesying. Mm. Let me read that again. And when Paul had laid his that hands on them, yes. the Holy Spirit came on them. And they begin speaking in tongues and prophesying. Let's go to verse 15. But the evil spirit answered them and said, Jesus, I know. That's what he said. That's the word. Pastor Franklin, I recognize. The word, the word. But who are you? That's what you say. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, who are you? Who are you? 
And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them leaped on. and mastered all of them and overpowered them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Naked and I'm going to read that again. But the evil spirit answered them and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are you? Amen. In this story, you can sit down. I'm going to teach. I'm going to try not to get too excited. But stay right there just in case we need you because you never know what God is going to do. So in this story, Paul was, you, you guys know this, um, we just passed the day of Pentecost and all those things that happened and the Holy Ghost came and Paul was doing ministry after God had knocked him off of his high horse. Yes, he did. He was persecuting the Christians. He was killing them. Yes. Doing a little bit of everything yes. like some of us were before we got saved. Yes. You might not have been killing somebody, but you might have been killing their integrity. Yes. You might have been killing their um, character. You might have been talking about the church. Just tearing the church down. So Paul had came in an encounter with God and God knocked him off his beast. And he, when God knocked him off his beast, he blinded him for three days so that he could get in touch with God. Sometimes God has to close your eyes to yes. the things that's going on around you yes. so that he can really um, talk to you and say the things that he yes. wants you to know. Yes. And many of us are just like Paul. When we get knocked off our beast, we say yes to the Lord. Yes. And then we begin to do ministry as he did. So in this particular chapter, Paul was going around and he was preaching after he got saved. Yes. He started preaching. He didn't wait for somebody to put him in a pulpit Amen. or to invite him to their church. Paul began to, began to preach the word of God and he was going out trying to tell everybody about this God that he had Come an encounter on, yes, with. Yes. This Come God on. that before this happened, he could not stand this God. He could not stand the people. Oh, but this God saved him and he had an encounter with God and his eyes were open. So he was going and he was preaching to the people and he had got in this particular chapter, he had came around to some church people or to some church goers. So, you know, some people yes, that was, yes, was attending yes. church yes. and they were busy doing the things of the church. They were busy singing in the choir. They were yes. busy yes. doing the usher board. They were busy playing the piano, but yes. they didn't have no real identity yeah, in no. Christ. They were busy doing church, but they wasn't busy doing God. Come on, so when Lord. Paul had got to them, he said, oh, have you received the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. since you believe? See, many of us are just like these church people. We are saved and we have a good form and we can we can hoop and we can holler, but we just have a form of godliness, but we're denying the people of the power that God brings when you get the Holy Ghost. Many of us don't have the Holy Ghost because we don't want to clean up our lives. See, because the Holy Spirit said, he said, I won't dwell in an unclean temple. So he said, how can bitter and sweet water come out of the same fountain? So many of us want to do God's will, but we want to do it our way. We want to still be able to have a little girlfriend on the side and still come in and say, I give God glory. We still want to be able to, you know, listen to Jay-Z and Beyonce. Saying, Ain't nothing wrong with it, but the Bible says you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So there should be a difference in me and somebody that's not in the church. But see, we don't believe that because we begin to come on and walk with me. We begin to walk so close now. I'm going to use me because I know she's good at saying. All right. So I'm a sinner. She's a saint. We begin to walk so close to the world that when I show up, you don't know whether I'm a saint or a saint because I look just like you. I do everything that she does. Come on. I, I, I go to the places you go to. And I'm, I'm calling myself a saint. But then every time I go in the world, the people don't know whether I'm no. saved or not. Because my fruit is not showing that I'm saved. And many of us, we have so many excuses. Well, you have to get around them so that you can win them, which is true. But the Bible says you have to be wise in order to win a soul. I can't do what you do and then tell you that my God is the one, right? Okay, so many of us, we want to still be dirty. Preach! Come on, and I just bring it to today's time. We want to be dirty, but we still want God to throw blessings on us. We still want to prophesy. We still, we're straddling the fence. And God said, I would that you would be hot or cold. He said, but if you're lukewarm, he said, I'm going to spit you out of my house. So we have to understand, thank you, I probably need you again. So we have to understand that this life is not a life of where I can do it if I feel like it. 
when I feel like it. And yeah. I'll do it when the church people are looking at me. But then behind closed doors, I'll do whatever I want to do. The Bible says not so. Not so. It does not work like that. So in this scripture, he was going to, um, he was preaching the gospel. He was trying to tell everybody about the good news of Jesus Christ. And he came across some good people. And they might have been doing some good things. They might have been saying some good things, yes. but he said, I'm not concerned about what you're saying. I'm not concerned about what you look like, but I want to know, have you been have filled you. with the, the Holy Ghost? Ghost. Because I have to be the only so. thing that keeps you yes. when the enemy comes in like a flood. Right. The Bible lets us know that the Spirit of God will lift up a standard, yes. but you have to have the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. You have to have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> How do I get the Holy Ghost? So. I don't get it by doing what I want to do when no, I want to do it. But I have to realize that my life is not my own. Yes, Amen. Amen. So even those things I like, yes, my Jesus. I can't do them if God said Amen. I can. Amen. We make it so hard. We make it so difficult. Yes. But it's really easy. It's easy. The Bible says that if we would, if when you know that you are sinning, he yes. said if you would just turn. Turn, turn, turn. 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 He turn. said each and every time that the we enemy can. throws something your way, he said I've already prepared okay. many ways of escape. Ways of escape. But yes. many times we don't look for the ways of escape oh, no. because we don't even yes. want to see them. We already like, I'm, 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 I'm going to do this tonight. Uh -huh. I'll get saved tomorrow. Yes. Yes. And I'm doing this tonight. Yes. Not knowing that God could crack this guy right while right. you're in your face. So Paul was going and he found the people and he said, they said, we haven't even heard. But you've been in church every Sunday. You've been coming to the free women's day services on every Friday. And you don't need, you, you see Pastor Franklin speaking in tongues and running around here and letting God use her in mighty ways. The things that she speaks come to pass. You're seeing all these things and you're saying that I don't even know. Don't even know. I haven't even experienced this Holy Ghost. My Lord. That's for Pastor Franklin. Yes. Preach, baby. That's for the preacher. But the Holy Ghost is for everybody. And we're going to need the Holy Ghost in order to live this life the way that God wants us to live it. Because you cannot be lukewarm. So when they said we haven't even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. We don't know that you're talking about this Holy Spirit. And then it goes down here and it says. What did it say? On hearing this, uh -huh. they believe. They believe. That's the problem that we're having. That's the problem. We don't believe, don't believe that God wants to fill us with the Holy Come Ghost. On. But he says that I'm more willing to Shut give it up. to you than you are to Jesus. receive it. My and when, I used to have a hard time with that when yes. I was young. Yes. When I was yes. young, I was yes. like, well, he's saying that he's more willing to give it to me than I am to receive it. But I really want it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So... The Bible can't lie, so yes. what am I doing wrong? Because I really yes, want it, but I yes. ain't getting it. All right. Uh -huh. So what he meant when he said that is, I want to give it to you, but you don't want to clean up your life to get uh -huh. it. Preach. I want to give it to you, but you don't want to change the way you Preach. walk in order yes. to get it. Yes, yes. I want to give it to you, but you don't want to change the way Preach. you talk. God Can I get a witness in here yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. You want the Holy Spirit, and you want the benefits, and you want the preaching, and you want the speaking in tongues, and you want to be able to shout, yeah, yeah. but nobody wants to live right. Don't want to live right. Amen. Nobody Amen. wants to do what God has called them to do. Oh, we're getting in a place, like I said, where we're walking so close to the world that they can't tell the difference between the that preacher and the preacher. Amen. That's true. Amen. Amen. True. The saints is going to Beyonce concerts. Yes. yes. Mercy. Amen. Come on, preacher. Yes, I know this is not the Jesus. 2017 kind of preaching. It's good yeah, word, good preach. word, good you word. Preach but if you are on a praise team and you had a Beyonce concert, come out I'm sorry, I got a problem. Come out for my mama. Right. Come on. Because the Bible told us to come out. Come out. Black and white, the word says yeah. so. The Bible says to come the out. Bible so maybe you was there witnessing. Come out. Anybody going to do Beyonce concert and witness? A lot of sinners there. <laughs> my God. But the Bible says that my light should shine. shine. That when darkness is in the place, that when I come in, the whole place lights up. Amen. And they always told me that when I walk with somebody, that the stronger man is going to oh, win. Man. So if I'm not strong in the Holy Ghost, I don't need to be hanging around a whole bunch of people that's not saved. I know this is old school kind of thing. Good word, good word. But we have to know, young people, who we are in God. We have to know who we are and what he has called us right. to be. Yes. Because he's calling us to a place of holiness. Holiness. Yes. That's it. To be Say filled it. with his Holy Spirit. Yes. 
so that when Pastor Franklin comes in, the party is already started. Already. Yes. We're not waiting on her to come and That's prophesy right. to us, That's but we can right. say, I can reach God for myself, That's but I thank God for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But the Holy Ghost wants Holy to come Ghost. in and clean us up. Clean us and up. not only does he want to clean us up, but he wants us to be so empowered yes. that when we go out, we can decree and declare over somebody else's life yes. the goodness of Jesus Christ. Yes. And we can tell them, Amen. I know I used to be out yes. there doing some of those things. Yes. I used to be the same yes. thing that you are. I was doing some of the same things that you are. As a matter of fact, if I be real, I did them a little bit better than you. But I came in contact with a man named Jesus. And when I touched him, and when I called on him, and when I got for real about him, he came into my life and he cleaned me up. So this is why we need the Holy Ghost. Because he has to clean us up. This is an everyday walk. This is an everyday walk. You preach it! Many people in the church are living like this today. We have a form of godliness, but we're denying the power in the Holy Ghost. Serving God is not good enough only in your mind. Amen. Many of us serve them in our mind, but we're not serving them with our lives. You must have a personal relationship that goes and it extends from your mind into your heart. Where you say, I love God so much that that thing that I want to do, I'm not going to do it just because I love him. If I can, I just be real. Some of the things I want to do, I'm not going to get them up. You're going to get them up. Some of the things still cross my mind and I still want to do them. But because I love God, I'm going to make a decision. That if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then I'll hear from heaven. Amen. I'll forget their sins and I'll heal the land. But we don't want to turn. We want to dibble and dabble and still think we're going to make it in. But we got to come and preach this new, this old way to this new generation. Because I believe that this is the generation that's going to usher in the presence of God. And we can't be concerned about whether you like what I say or whether you like what I do. But I have to serve God outside of my mind and I have to let it come into my heart. So I got three points and I'm going to be out of your way. The church must take back our godly take identity. Back. <laughs> Jesus. Amen. My God. Young people, we have to take back our godly identity. Godly. We have to go back to living holiness. Holy, holy. Well, we didn't get mad if the pastor told us, well, no, you're not ready, baby. Uh -huh. That's pastor right. can't even tell the saints what to do no more without them leaving the church. My God. But I decree and declare that you should tell them what to do, and if they leave, that's on them. That's on them. Hallelujah. Because yeah. they ask for me in my house. Amen. I'm going to serve the Lord. You can't be. Let, let's talk about this real quick. Take your time. We have to let the spirit of offense. The spirit. We have to get it out of the church. Get it out. There used to be a time where. The older season saints yes, could say stuff to the young people yeah. and not have to worry about getting laid out by their parents. But now, we live in a day where you better not say nothing to my kid. And then they can go to school. And then the teacher called you and you go there and act a fool when you should be checking your child. This is the time that we're living in and we're wondering why our black men are getting shot and getting killed in the streets because we don't have no respect for authority. Sometimes it just, it pays off just to close your mouth. And then many of our brothers would still be living if they would talk just to close your mouth. And guess what, nine times out of 10, the cops was probably wrong. But guess what, if I'm dead, what good was it? Can't talk. So right. we have to go back to respecting the people Respect. that have authority over us. Amen. And then if, let's talk about this, like I said, let's talk about the talk spirit about of offense talk that has come it. into the house of God. Yes. Where the people of God are offended by every of little thing. It's a trick of the devil. Amen. It's Amen. part of this plan to get the people of God off course. Amen. But if you think that this mother, I think this mother was looking at me weird when I was preaching. I ain't going back to that church no more. Well, what good is that going to do? So we have to recognize the spirit of offense. And the spirit of offense will get into you so bad yes. that it will make you leave a church Amen. where the people really love you I and you'll go yes. to a church where they don't care I nothing about you. Pray. 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 And they'll use you for your gift. And then when they're done with you, they'll leave you just like they left your pastor. Yes. 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 
But when we begin to operate in the spirit of offense, we open ourselves up to the enemy. And then when our children start acting up, we wonder what happened. Because you let that demonic spirit in your house. And I'm so easily offended. Nobody can say nothing to me. What happened to the church when we used to have a backbone? Pastor would sit us there. We would sit down like it wasn't nothing. And then get up. Now you sit somebody down, you better sit their whole family down because they're all going to roll out around. Yeah. Don't say that God told you to say something and then you used to somebody else that they think that, well, they should have used this person. We live in a generation where the children can tell the parents the what to do. And we have adopted this same crazy philosophy in the church where the children can tell the pastor what to do. If you don't like what the pastor is saying, go find another church. Don't stay in here causing a whole bunch of confusion. In this house, if you don't like what the pastor is saying, there's the door. There's the door. But see, we don't hear this today. We rather sit here under a ministry and be mad and hinder the spirit of God and stay here for years and years and years and then the young people are picking up on this demonic Jezebel spirit that you have and then we wonder why our children are crazy it's probably because you've been crazy a little bit but we as the church we have to learn how to take something when we go out in the world then they say ain't no hurt like church hurt I can't Say that again. That's a lie. That's a lie. You go on your job and they talk about you. Like no. Your family talk about you. Some of your closest friends talk about you and you steady smiling with them. And then as soon as somebody say you can't sing that song, baby, you ready to leave the church? Talk about you got church hurt. Preach, preach. You preach. This is the plan of the enemy to get the people of God off course. And when Paul came, when the Holy Spirit came, the people were on one accord. They were in one place. I'm reminded of the children when they were building the tower. And they said, God said, God said. He said, I have to go down here and do something about this. Because they're on one accord and they're speaking the same thing. So there's nothing that they cannot accomplish because they're on one accord. So God came and he confused the language. We need to get back to being on one accord. Just because I'm on one accord don't mean... I'm going to like everything you say, bro. That's right. That's right. I, that don't mean I'm going to like everything. And you definitely not going to like everything I say. Right. You're definitely not going to like everything I do. But guess what? At the end of the day, you my brother. Right. So we're going to work this thing together. Yes. But see, we the enemy has us so tricked that as soon as he say, well, I don't like that tie, we roll out. Roll straight out. <laughs> then we forget about this young, beautiful baby that God told us to That's be here right. for. Yeah. We forget about this young beautiful lady that God told us to be here for. And we'll get mad and we'll leave and we'll cancel our own assignments and you don't realize that if you don't do it God's way that you're going to have to come back and do it all again. And this is what the, and the enemy is making a mockery of the people of God. And that's why the world doesn't respect us. Because we don't respect ourselves. We get on Facebook talk about the church. Dog the church house. And then go to your friend You gonna come to church with me next week What in the world would I come to your church for after your, What you just put on Facebook But see the enemy has a so confused That we react Without even thinking about what we're doing So we put things on Facebook And we put things on live And we go in on people And we do all kinds of stuff And then we try to tell the world about a good God And they look at like Where has your good God been Because I've been watching your good Facebook And there ain't been nothing good about it Talk to me, I got something to say So then the world has a perception of God Amen. So now the world is looking at me Because I want to be crazy And they associate me as as God, even though I'm not God, Woo. they say, well, I'm not never going to that church because I don't church people say. crazy. Amen. I don't want to serve that God because look at him and look what he did. Uh -huh. He just got caught doing this and she just got caught doing that and I saw her at the liquor store and I saw him here and I saw him there and then we invite them to church and they're like, what? No. I'll be, I'll be better off staying out here where I'm at. That's right. That's right. So when the Holy Ghost comes, he will Move from just doing church uh -huh. yes. to doing God. Amen. Because it's good for you to come here. Amen. The enemy will get you to think, well, you don't have to come to church every time the church door is open. 
That's a new thing. That's another new thing that I can't stand. <laughs> you go to that job every time the job door is open. You send them kids to school every time that school door opens. Yes. But then when it comes to the house of God, well, you don't know how to do it. Hey! Gotta have family time. It's God. Family dead church. That's what we, that's what we like to say. And then we wonder why the children have no respect for the house of God. It's because you, the little kids will come to you and say, Mommy, I don't feel like going to church this week. You say, okay, baby, you can stay home. Uh-huh. Then Monday morning come, you they, they sleep. They say, Mommy, I don't feel like going to school. Uh-huh. You'll almost beat them out the house. Yes, yes, yes. You yes. just told that child that church is more, um, that school is more important than child. Uh-huh. I mean, the church. That's right. We have to watch what we do. And many times we think that these things are like small things. But our Little children facts. are watching us. Yes. And when you make me go to school, but you don't make me go to church, you didn't tell me that school is more important than more church. Important. Yes. Amen. That's it. And Amen. we think, oh, well, it's just, you know, they're tired, you know. we all tired. So what? That's right. Get up. Get up. God is about to come. Amen. Amen. You don't have time. He's showing up in. Y'all, we are so worried about this world, this, this world. world, and the things yeah. in the world. Up in you got to get A's in school. You got to get B's in school. But yes. you can get F's in church. My you come in here with your come video on, games you and you sit and you sleep. Talking but if the teacher called you and said that your child was sleeping in school, oh my God, we might you have to call CPS on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to begin to show our children the importance of God and we have to let them know. And we have gotten so consumed with this world that we have forgotten that God is number one. Because guess what? I can fail every grade from kindergarten to 12 and God come back and I still go with him. Amen. Because my heart that's was right. conditioned to God. That's right. that's right. I can be broke, right. busted, and disgusted, that's right. but have a relationship with God and have the Holy Spirit. And when He comes, right. I will live again. again. Guess what? In my mansion with my yes. new diploma, have Himself. Yes. Yes. But then you can go to college and get a master and a PhD and not know God and not want to know God. And the Bible says, and the rich man lifted his eyes, eyes in, in hell. hell. That's what the word So we have to let these kids know that we're just not living for today. Amen. But we're living to live again. And this might seem crazy, it might seem spooky, it might seem weird. But I tell people all the time, I would rather live like there is a God and find out in the end that there's not. Than live like there's not a God and then find out in the end that there is a God. And they're trying to tell us that this thing that we're doing is not the right thing. Yes, they are. But we have to know that we serve a living God. We serve a good God. And just like Paul, when he said, now it's good that you were filled or that you um, got saved. It's good that all y'all are saved and in the house of God. But have you been filled? Have you been filled? Somebody look at their neighbor and say, have you been filled? Have you been filled? We have to get from the level of being just saved. And we have to clean up our lives. Clean up our heads. And we have to ask God for the Holy Spirit. Let him come in. And really change us. That when I look at you, that you look different. I'm not saying put a long dress on and wear them things on you. Yes. You wear a turtleneck and it's 100 degrees outside. But what I am saying is that your appearance should show that you're saved. Yes. You should look like you've been changed. You should look like you have that you don't been through. You don't look like what you've been through. That's it. But only Jesus can do this. So let's go. Let's go back. So we laid hands on them, and they got filled. Many of us are operating on our own emotions. Own emotions. We're coming in the house of God, and we're having an emotional good time. We shout and we falling out, and then when we go home. The devil's right there because he's not scared of your dance. No, no ain't scared of it. Amen. If it don't have no power. Yeah. Now, he can be scared of your dance if it's full of power. Come on. Amen. Because your praise is your weapon. Yeah. But if you know that when you leave this place, you're going to go back to doing whatever you was doing. He, he's not worried about you coming here because he know that if you come in here and you playing with God, it's anything liable to happen to you. That's yes. right. Amen. So we're in the world, but we're not of the world. We talk the same. We dress the same. We go to the same places. I like this one. We throw shade the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Put yes, statuses sir. on Facebook about the pastor and think she don't know us about her. Jesus. You're lucky you got a nice pastor that don't respond to foolishness. Amen. Amen. No, I don't. Sure don't. We take Facebook for reality. Then we come in church and we just play around. We're more committed to Facebook and Instagram and selfies. 
Everything is about me. Come on. He had crept back into the spirit of the devil, of Lucifer, the same spirit that got him kicked out of heaven. The church is taking it on. And we're so concerned with us and me and my. I, I, I. I, I, I. Come on. If it's not about me, I don't want to do it. do it. If I don't get no glory, I don't want to do it. I come to let you know that's the same spirit that got the devil kicked out of heaven. Same spirit. But we must be able to look to God and let him be the head of our life and let him be the light of this world. Your salvation must last past the church service. Amen. He said, go into the, let me say that again. Your salvation must last past the church service. Yes. He said, go into the, all the world and preach the gospel. But we only want to be saved in church. My dog. We think this is say preaching something. the gospel. Yeah, say something. This is just a part of preaching part the gospel. Of but you can do more outside those more. doors than yes, I can sir. do right here. Yes, sir. You can go on your job and you can live a life. Yes, you don't even have to say Jesus and they'll know that it's yes. something different about you. Amen. Because you are peculiar. People, God has already told you. Yes. But if you begin to take on what the devil is saying you are, then you will never go to where God is never, taking you. Never. Amen. 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 So outside the doors, we're relying on the prayers and the pastor. Mm -hmm. um, we're relying on the prayers and the salvation of Pastor Franklin. My Lord. Yeah. Jesus. Amen. 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 Outside the doors. Outside. When I go out there, I'm going to live how I want to live. But because you're praying for me, I know I'm going to be covered. Jesus. Uh -huh. Jesus. I'm relying on her prayers and her faith and her salvation to get me through this week. But it's time for us to get a personal relationship personal with God. Personal. Say that. Like man. Paul was saying to these people, have you have received, you received the Holy Ghost? You. I'm not, Pastor Brenda is about to stand before God for herself. Oh, yeah. Amen. But she has a work to do, and it's going to impact each and every one of you. But yeah. you're not going to get to heaven off of Pastor Franklin's anointing. Amen. But you got to have your own Amen. relationship with God. Yeah. So yeah. I come to Jesus. ask you a question. Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Because the devil knows exactly who you he are. He know it. Amen. He's been to where we're trying to get to. And even though you may not know who you are, the devil knows who you are. And that's why he's trying to stop you from doing the ministry. Because even though you feel like you're not um, adequate or you feel like you're not good enough, the devil knows Preach. that if this sister Preach. would get her mind on God for real, if this brother would get his mind on God for real, that he would really tear down my camp. The devil knows who you are, but we don't even know who we are. So like they said, Paul, I know. That's what Jesus you. I know. Uh -huh. But who are you? Who are and as long you? as the enemy can get you not to know really who you are in God, he will destroy you every time. But if we begin to know who we are, and not only who we are, but whose we are. I went to the hospital one time. I was looking for this person. And the person didn't have any ID on her when she went. So nobody knew who I was talking about. I was calling the girl by name. Uh -huh. And they were saying, she's not here. Not here. I said, she's here. I know she's here. They told me she was here. They was like, no, she's not here. We don't have anybody by that name. So I started to describe the young lady, and I was telling them, you know, where she lived and, you know, how she came in. And then they said, they was like, well, let's, let me pull up this picture. So they pulled up this picture, and they showed me. They said, is this her? I said, yes, this, this is her. You've been telling me she's not here. She's right here. So they said, oh, the Jane Doe has been identified. Oh my God. And many of us, are walking around just like that. We're Jane Doe. Uh -huh. We don't know who we are. Mm. We're waiting on somebody to come and identify us and tell us, well, you're a preacher, you're an apostle, you're a teacher, you're this and you're that. But God said, I've already called you and I've already told you through life experiences, I've told you who you are, but you will not receive it. We are looking for man to tell us who we are. So God is that I've already called you before the foundations of the earth. But many of us are looking for someone to call us out. Please, pass, please, preacher, please call me up. Tell me what God is telling you to tell me. If you wait on a preacher to tell you who you are, you never will find out. But we have to have the Holy Ghost power for ourselves. Yes. We have to know who we are. I and God, the only way that you can know it. who you are is through going to yes. God. Somebody put those hands together. Yes. I'm almost done. We're moving. Wonderful. We moving. I'm going to read the scripture. We're talking good. Good stuff. I told y'all I was going to try to teach. Am I helping somebody? Yes. 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 yes Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In the year that King Uzziah died, uh -huh, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. <laughs> That's what it say. He was sitting upon a throne. He was high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Mm -hmm. 
Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and two he flew. Yes. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Yes, sir. And I said, listen to this, woe is me, for I am lost. I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in a mist of a people with unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken from the tongs from the altar. He touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Look at verse 8. We're in Isaiah 6, verse 8. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And whom will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. So in this particular scripture, God was calling. And then he was looking for someone to do the work of the Lord like he is now. But they yes, had to be cleaned up. Many of us have to get ourselves cleaned up. Yes. Amen. Yes. We have to get ourselves cleaned up. Don't get bored with me. I'm about to Come on. We have to get ourselves cleaned up. And then we can go. But many of us want, we want to put the cart before the horse. We want to go and then get cleaned up. But it says in the year that he died, I, I saw the Lord. So when he died, it wasn't that Uzziah was a bad person, but he was blocking me from seeing God. Because as long as I had Uzziah, I didn't have to go to God for myself. But as soon as something happened to Uzziah, I had to see the Lord for myself. I could no longer rely on his prayers. But then I had to find out, what well, now it's time for me to have a personal relationship with God. But we'd rather be stars in the house of God. Amen. <laughs> My Lord. We want to be famous. Come on, preacher. We want to be the best of this and the best of that. Mm. And live in any kind of way. Any kind of Making the word of God to no effect through my, my traditions, which you have handed down. Jesus. Many of us are like the sons of Sceva. We're trying to do ministry in an unclean temple. We want to do it in the power of ourselves or the power of Jesus. Or my we want Lord. to do it in the power of Pastor Franklin. But God is looking for some people that will say, clean me up, God, yes, and use yes. me for your glory. Yeah. When we get this mindset, we will do damage to Satan's kingdom. Glory. And we will beat the devil. But you've got to do it God's way. Amen. 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 God's way. Stand up all over the building. Amen. Amen. we got to do it God's way. It has to be God's way. Maybe next time I come, I can hoop. The whole time. But we have to do it God's way. God's way. Gotta do it His way. Yes, sir. There is no other way. He told us that if you try to come any other way, any other way, you are a thief, thief. and you're a robber. Because there's only one way to get to God, and that's through who? Jesus Christ. If you go try to make it any other way, I come to let you know that you will not make it. But we have to clean up our hearts. We have to clean up our lives. We have to submit to leadership. Yes. And when she says something, even if we don't understand it, we have to continue to work the ministry of God because she's the set head over this household. Amen. And if someone comes to you talking about your pastor, you should shut it down real quick. Amen. Or can I get somebody that love her to shout, Amen! Amen. Because there's enemies that are designed to take you from your ministry. And they will prostitute your gift. And then when you're broke, busted, and disgusted, they'll leave you and wash their hands with you. And then guess what? You're going to have to come right back to grace and mercy. So now is the time to make up in your mind, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to be filled with the Holy Ghost for real this time. And I'm going to submit to leadership. And I'm going to really begin to find out who I am. Your diploma can't tell you who you are. A man can't tell you who you are. If you go out, I don't even know why I'm going this way. If you go, go out ahead. and find Let the Lord have a man way. that is not ready, Let the Lord have his way. all you're doing is messing up what God has called you to do. And you're setting yourself back, getting something that God has not ordained for you at the time. Amen. 
Right. Many of us want to go and get things, and because it looks good, we want to say, well, I'm going to just deal with it. And we find out that that thing that we thought it yes. was is taking us from God. Amen. We want boyfriends and girlfriends and wives and husbands, but you don't even know who you are. Amen. How can you love somebody you don't even love yourself? Amen. And this is why we're getting married, and the marriages ain't even lasting a year. All right. Because you married an idea of marriage. Yes. It looks good. He's strong and he got muscles and all this kind of stuff. It looks good. But God said, I, just like when he said, when he called David, I have not chosen this. See, all the other brothers, they thought that they was the one because they looked the part. They had been training and they were ready because Jesse had trained them for years and years yeah. and years. But David was out there and he was out there with the sheep yeah. doing what um, nobody else wanted to do. And then when um, Samuel came, he looked at all the brothers and he said, Now I know God has told me to come here. Jesse, is there another? Jesse said, No, there's one more. But I ain't really proud of that one. He out there with the sheep. Jesse said, Samuel said, Go get him. That's what God is saying to you today. You might not feel adequate. You might feel like you're not good enough. Somebody that might have told you that you're not good enough. Your family may have spoken over your life. They may have said you're going to be just like your dad. You're going to be just like your mom. Yes. But we come to expose that devil today. Yes. And we come to show you who you are only through God. You cannot find out who you are. Just like David. David was out there with them sheep. He knew who he was. That lion came, he killed that lion. Come on. Yes, he did. That bear came, he killed the bear. Yes, he did. So God anointed him to be king. Yes, and then in the next chapter, it was this giant that was out there um, defying the armies of God. And his name was Goliath. And none of the other brothers were willing to go and fight this giant. But David, little old David, little old David, he said, I'll fight this giant. And God is calling some Davids this morning. He's calling you to come out. You've been doing things in the background long enough. You've been not getting the credit. Nobody's been saying your name. Pastor Franklin hasn't called you to preach because God has had you hidden. But today is your day. God said, today I'm calling you. So when that giant came, many of us are facing so many giants. Many of us are facing molestation and rape and drugs and alcoholism and mommy wasn't there, daddy wasn't there, and I didn't love myself, I had no self-esteem. They told me I was ugly, they told me I was this, they told me I was that, but God said today, God said. today, 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 today is your day. Goliath came, he looked at David, he said, what is this? You gonna send a kid to a man's work what is this many of our giants are looking at us and they're saying what is this who are you who are you and many of us are at home now let me go sit back down because my giant has faced me my giant has talked back to me but God is looking for some people that say I can talk to that giant in my life I can speak, the Bible says in Mark 11, 23, that we can speak to the mountain and it will be removed, cast into the sea. So do I got any giant killers in here this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Do I got any people that's filled with the Holy Ghost that say, I'm going to defeat this giant this time. This giant has been beating me all my life. It's been wearing me out and it's been on my mind. But I'm going to beat this giant. Let's go in for a little bit. Let's begin to shift this atmosphere for a little bit. For all my giant killers out there in the audience, can we just begin to usher up a praise in this place? We're about to move. I don't care if only one person has stepped by the message. But we come to the sea and declare that every giant that's been facing you is about to come down this morning. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what they did to you. But God is able to play the giant. Do I got anybody that wants to play the giant this morning? Hallelujah. Come on, let's ask them. The presence of God. The fear of God is already here. I know what happened to you was wrong. I'm not saying that what happened to you was right. But what I'm saying. 